Okay, so our next speaker this morning is Anna Pirutka, and she'll talk about stable rationality and quartic threefold. Okay, so the talk will be mostly about uh, quartic threefolds, but we will also discuss some other questions related to the rationality and stable rationality. So because we already had several talks during this week uh, on these questions, I decided just to put some notions just here. And so if you take notes, you should already have them, but I will still recall them again. So you take a some field to start with, and uh, a smooth, not necessarily projective for, for these definitions, but still this will be the case we will consider mostly. Uh, so smooth projective variety, you can think also about a, a hypersurface defined just by one equation of degree D. In this case, for the whole talk, I will denote it like XD in PN, meaning that it is a priori smooth, just for the talk. And uh, for such variety, you can associate the field of functions. And then you have several ways to compare your variety to a projective space. So the, very, uh, the most close varieties to projective space are rational. So if you like the point of view function fields, um, so you will say that this uh, extension is purely transcendental. And if you like more like geometrical point of view, you will just say that you can find two open, the risky open subsets in X and in projective space, uh, such that they are isomorphic, meaning that X is birational to Pn. And uh, <coughs> the second notion, is uh, that X is stably rational if uh, the previous one holds after multiplication by some projective space, meaning that your extension will become purely transcendental after adding some independent variables, or that after multiplying to some projective space, your variety become rational. And then um, another popular notion is a unirational variety. So I, I really put four here. So uh, X is unirational if the function field is subfield of a purely transcendental extension of your base field, or if uh, you can find a rational dominant map from some projective space to X. And actually here you can take M equals to dimension of X independently of the field, even if your field is finite. Uh, so there is an argument uh, in an um, article by Janusz Kolar, which explains you how to do, and in general, if chi is infinite, it's just by like general section argument. Okay, so these are three notions we saw already. Uh, they will stay on the blackboard if you need to like to come back and to see them again. And uh, let me give you two more. Okay, so more notions. So you can see here that three is missing. So that's done on purpose. So let me do some more exotic uh, definition. So X is uh, retract rational. So here I will give more geometric definition. Uh, if the identity of X factorizes rationally through a projective space, meaning that if you can find U open in X, it exists um, some M and V open in projective space, PM over K, and there exist two maps uh, going from U to V and to U that I will call uh, FJ, such that the composition is identity on U. Okay. So obviously from the definitions uh, we have uh, so, as I wrote here, 1 applies 2. Actually, here, 2 implies 3. And 3 implies 4. And let me give you one more definition, which is uh, also kind of popular. It is, uh, well, let me, for simplicity, assume here that k equals to c. But of course, others, other fields uh, can also be considered. So, x is uh, rationally connected. Well, if the following picture uh, holds, so you take your variety x, then you take any two points, x1 and x2, and you want to be able to join them by some rational curve, meaning that you will have a map from p1 with 0, infinity, and the map is like this. So if 
f for any points x1 and x2 in x of c, you can find a map f from p1 to x with 0 going to x1 and infinity to x2. Well, here I'm restricting to smooth projective varieties, and in particular you have examples of finer varieties in over C, and uh, uh, more kind of rudimentary, uh, like examples, more easy examples, these ones. XD, the hypersurfaces of degree n, with D at most n. Okay, so uh, also obviously four implies five. I mean, you can think a little bit. Okay, so these are all notions of uh, interest for us for uh, this talk. So what about other directions? We have all these directions from up to down and uh, going up actually, in s so um, no inverse direction is true, is supposed to be true. There are some counterexamples and some of them are open. Okay, so but we don't know, uh, like, well, the, the precise picture is still not clear. So let me tell you this, well, maybe, what yes. Examples of retract rationality. I will give you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So precisely because of uh, because of this, I will speaking about these implications. So two, so you inverse. Okay. So two does not imply one. Uh, so this, uh, the, uh, there is example by Beauville, Kodiotelian, Sansfuc, and Sfignator d'ailleurs. So they produced a threefold, which is actually a fibered in conic. So it's a conic bundle. Uh, where, which is um, uh, stably rational by some explicit construction and which is not rational by the, uh, by the um, criterion using intermediate Jacobian, like for cubics, okay? So conic bundles are actually quite explicit. So you write like this, equals to P T X. So uh, any model, like a projective model of this, with um, a of t is discriminant of p t x degree in x of p equals to 3 and degree of a of t should be at least 5 and if you like uh, the explicit equations I can give you one so you write x uh, y square plus T square plus one, T four plus T C six plus T four plus T one. Um, yeah, that square equals to two x cube plus three T square x square plus T four plus one. So these kind of examples um, produce your varieties which are stably rational but not rational. Okay, so. Now, so for your question for a retract rational, so 3 implies 2 is open, so we don't know any example, but here is an example of variety which is known to be retract rational, but which is not known to be stably rational. So this kind of variety is actually quotients, so uh, for x equals to um, GLN by PGLP uh, X is stably rational. Oh, it's a rest story, retract rational. So meaning, as I said here, like if you don't, well, projective means you, you can avoid this uh, assumption. And so you just find some uh, so you act by PGLP, so you find some embeddings in GLN, then you, you, P is prime here, so it's important. And then you have a quotient, uh, take a quotient, and Seltman proved that X is a retract rational. 
so to establish this, he uh, used what is called um, a lifting property for retract rationality. So uh, what, uh, here is what he used. So actually, he showed that exists V in X open, such that for any uh, local, so K algebra, well, KC here, KC here, K algebra, uh, the map V of A, so K algebra A, sorry, with residue field little k, well, kappa, maybe kappa because little k is here, the map v of a to v of kappa is onto. Well, one has to prove why this is enough, but still this criterion exists. And then uh, he used uh, this one to prove uh, this result, and uh, then uh, Coriotelen and Sansuk, they also gave more explicit construction. Okay, so, uh, well, here's a candidate to understand at least how is it, uh, is it stably rational or not. Well, now for uh, four to three, uh, well, there are, as we learn on Monday, so there are some examples of varieties which are unirational but not rational. The one example, so uh, the example by Artin and Marford, uh, also um, shows that uh, the variety is not stably rational. So let me uh, write it again. So maybe I'll do it like this. So. So, well, I think that I actually will, will speak about this just a few minutes later. And then for 5 implies 4, it's still open. And you can take your favorite, like, difficult or easy variety and try to, to show this. In particular, you can do this for, well, uh, quartics, so maybe. So this one, this could be a priori example, so meaning that the, these are rationally connected. But they are not all. I mean, they are not all known to be unirational. There are some examples which are unirational, but maybe not all. Maybe conic bundles. But uh, Ivan has left, so he cannot comment on this. So conic bundles. Maybe. Okay. So this is Rational. rationally connected. Ah, Sorry. So in particular. As soon as you have a degree smaller than n, you can try. Okay. Okay. So this is like general properties, and now let me speak more about uh, first how to prove that the variety is not stably rational. So this is the second part. Here. Proving the non-stable. The, the, well, maybe it's better like this, stable non-rationality. Yes? Between the loss of generality and the definition of the rationally connected manifold, uh, if you allow stable maps of, uh, of gen zero. So not, not no, you can, you, I mean, in this uh, um, contest, like smooth over C, etc., you can also like uh, ask for, ch like, yeah. as you're saying, by chains of uh, rational curves. You can also like uh, ask not all any two, but the general ones. So, in this uh, situation, everything, all definitions actually mm -hmm. collapse. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, so uh, as I said, Artin Mafford. Let me just recall. So it's a double cover. Uh, so I will write Z. So the example is a smooth variety, so smooth model, so over C, of the following double curve, Z4 square plus, so this is plus uh, quartic. So the equation is quartic is the following one. So I take first some equation of degree three, or degree two, 
So this is the conic plus sum equation of degree 3. So this one is degree 3, homogeneous. And sum of degree 4 here. With some special choice of alphabet and gamma. And you can also view also another point of view as a conic bundle. More or less over P2, more or less just by projection to Z0, Z1, Z2 coordinates, yeah. Uh, okay, so the point of this construction that I would like to stress is that uh, this example is actually defined over Q bar. A priori it's over C, but you can, you can see that it can be defined over Q bar. So can be defined over Q. Okay. Oops. And then let me go back to description of the invariant that Artin Mumford used. So if you came here on Monday, then you learned that actually the invariant was a torsion in the H3. So invariant. which shows that this variety is not rational and not even stably rational, is that H3 acts Z, torsion is not zero. Well, I would like to take another point of view. Uh, well, it turns out that for this variety it's equivalent. I prefer to say that the Brouwer group has a two torsion element here. So, or Brouwer group acts Z, sorry, it's Z. Z is not zero. Okay, and so this kind of invariance it belongs to a family of invariants which are called unramified cohomology groups. So let me uh, tell you this because all these invariants turns out turns out to be uh, um, stable invariants. So let me define. So for X, the smoothly projective variety, say, over C, the following groups. So I'll write like this, HI unramified of, well, 4X over C, projective and smooth. This invariance, so X with ZL coefficients at the following ones. So actually, you look for the Galois cohomology of the field of functions of X with this constant coefficients. And then you look for the elements inside, such that, well, the following property holds, that uh, the residue dx of xi equals to 0 for any x point in codimension 1. So maybe I have to write something more here. So these are just Galois cohomology groups. You can define in Galois cohomology the rate you maps, which goes to h i minus 1 of the residue field of little x. So I don't want to write coefficients because there is a twist of is minus 1. This is dx. And then, well, this is for smooth and projective variety. And uh, if uh, you have a variety which is open, then you can also define these groups. But then you take not um, points of codimension 1, but just all valuations of rank 1 or all divisorial valuations, so there is a way to define these groups. So I'll write it here, x non-proper, uh, change dx by dv. For v some, some valuations. And so this so what is why I'm speaking about these groups? Because of the following property. So, so we have the following so properties. Well, the first one is that for x over c, h2 unramified of x with these coefficients is exactly the torsion in the Brouwer group. 
So like this, you recover your bra rule for each two. Then this seems become more complicated, but you can show at least that they are actually zero for x stably rational, and i at least one. So this is good because we found some invariants uh, which should vanish. Well, I didn't write equals to zero, which should vanish for a stably rational variety. But the problem that in general they are very difficult to compute. But still, uh, well, we have some invariance. And uh, okay, uh, should I say more? Oh yeah, um, I just wanted to argue a little bit more on this example of uh, Ratin and Manfred, that actually you can construct also uh, vari examples where, um, like H3 is non-zero, or even higher normified cohomology is non-zero. Here, uh, these examples are conic bundles. But then you can change conic bundles by some uh, vibrations in quadrics in order to get these examples. Uh, but well, there is some issue with this. So let me let me tell you this. So uh, more. Uh, well, so Coyote, Yen, Ellen, and Luyan Guren produce the following examples. So. You can take x over p3, um, uh, x of dimension 6, with generic fiber, define it by the following kind of equations. So it's a quadratic form. Um, I will write it in the diagonal form as 1. Some functions f1, f2, f1, f2, and g1, j2. So these are functions. Uh, uh, from the function field of P3. And then the point is that uh, here F1 is something like X over Y. This one is something like Z over T. And this one is something like uh, 32, degree 32. Like, uh, it's, uh, here is some polynomial of degree 32. And here is the same. Okay? And they show that actually for these varieties, the H3 and the methylite is non-zero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, there are some some there are some examples like this. So, uh, what's the surface of the generation? Yeah. Uh, well, it's actually uh, this one is like a product of uh, uh, sixteen lines. So uh, all of this. Uh, Lines maybe. Sorry. In simplicity. Now, axis of dimension four. What is the point? This dimension six. Yeah, because it's a generic fiber of this vibration. So the generic fiber, uh, well, sorry. Uh, so uh, x, y, z, t are just, uh, are just coefficients uh, in some projective space. Sorry, it was not okay. clear. And it's actually a quadric of dimension 3, and the whole uh, thing is in dimension 6. Okay. And uh, uh, well, also, I will try to explain uh, why I'm speaking about this. Um, so also, Aravind Daslok, he produced also examples of the same type, like uh, vibrations in quadrics. Uh, oh, with h n unramified non-zero. And the previous, uh, the previous h i unramified actually zero for i smaller than n. And the reason is that, well, if you think about, well, we will, we will see anyway later, that um, when we consider the quart quartix, then uh, the example of artin Marmfort is somehow crucial, because you can degenerate uh, some quartix on artin Marmfort. And um, here, you can also say, OK, I have some varieties where I have some um, non-trivial invariants. But the point is that here, uh, these degrees that's why I stress here, are uh, very ugly. So uh, you can, I mean, if you are able to produce some nice variety that, that could degenerate to this one, so it will be very nice. But, uh, well, um, it happens that for our, the first one, though the uh, R.T. Mofford example, uh, well, uh, it, it's better, it, it can be better used for other situations. Here there are some other ones, but for the moment we see no way to use them. <coughs> okay. So what should I say more? Or I wanted to say also that um, 
so this is defined to q bar, but you can also produce similar examples of an algebraic closure of a finite field. So let me tell you this because it will be important for us yet. So this is singular, but you know that the resolution of singularity is nice, but you don't know that you can include it in a family. Well, even the resolution of singularity is not very clear because you have a, uh, no, um, well, okay. Um, there are some cases when there are some explicit computations of resolution of singularities, but not, I guess, for, I, I know like one case, but I'm not sure that the, Somebody looked uh, what can happen. Okay. Okay. But you're saying if they don't deform to simpler varieties, then we can't conclude something for those simpler varieties. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's more or less what I wanted to say. Okay. Uh, so our, our application to uh, finite fields. So because here everything is defined over Q bar, I can say, OK, this uh, variety Z, I can um, define it over some number field, and then even extend it over some open or over the ring of integers of the number field. And then I can look to the degenerations to deduce something. And so for such varieties, um, what, will, what I will say here, so exists, exists K in number field. And you can spec OK open. And the vibration Z over U, say, well, because we restrict to open, we can assume that it, it is, has smooth projective fibers with, um, the, with um, the fiber over C, the generic fiber, is the initial variety Z. And then, uh, so for this variety, we said Brow group is non-zero, but actually we can also say that um, this Brow group here uh, equals to H3 et al. Um, well, this implies that H3 et al uh, Z with Z2 coefficients to primary torsion is non-zero. Because actually for this variety, B2 equals to rho, so you can, uh, you can uh, deduce this. And these groups, uh, well, at least like this, you can see that they, they do behave very well in these families, meaning that uh, here uh, we can also assume that um, and uh, for any little u, in u the same property hold, holds that H3 et al. Was u. Uh, U bar, meaning that I'm going to an algebraic closure of the corresponding finite field uh, with these coefficients. Yeah. Zero. And so also, in particular, the brow group is not zero. <laughs> so like this, you can also produce uh, examples. So actually, precisely also two portions. <laughs> With these invariants, which are not trivial, but also of an algebraic closure of a finite field. And it will really be important for us when we will try to produce something over Q bar later. Okay. So maybe that's enough for the moment for um, this uh, discussion with uh, Artin Mumford example. So let me just uh, mention one another example because I just defined these groups. So. Okay. Oh, okay, that's super because I, it's still here. So, Robert was very interested to know which kind of uh, examples we have to consider, but now well, um, let me try to, 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 to catch his attention again. So, um, uh, there is also an open question here. Uh, if you have G reductive and connected, so you re I replace this PGLP by G reductive and connected, and you realize it in some GLN, that it's open to know what can you say about the quotients. So we don't know in general over C uh, if is a question 
is this variety rational? So the invariants, uh, well, actually, these are stable rational invariants. They were tried by Bogomolov and Saltman, and on the level of H2, uh, they managed to prove is actually these groups are zero for Bogomolov and Saltman. It's Bogomolov and Saltman. And then, so uh, one can try to compute for these groups higher invariants or something else. So Hn, unromified, is same. So, so it seem, still seems plausible to compute. OK. So now let me, yes? Yeah, but well, OK. But um, uh, yeah, so it's very recent, I guess. It's about five years. Yeah, OK. Well, uh, and also Mercury has examples, actually, where there are some non-trivial and various, but not over C, but over uh, non-algebraically closed field. Okay. So let me uh, now speak uh, about quartics finally. So, okay. This is not really an example. What? Well, you said that uh, an example was coming. <coughs> well, I was just saying that I wanted to, to give some, to discuss something more, and now we'll discuss quartics. So, which example you were waiting for? <laughs> No. no, it was just the example of varieties of interest. So let it, let me put it this way. Okay, so I'll just keep this because uh, I want to keep it. Okay, so quartic. Okay, so. Uh, by the work of Iskowski and Manin, we know that these, uh, the quartic, uh, smooth quartic trifles are never rational. Okay. So. so x4 and p4, never rational. And the reason is so-called rigidity argument is that the group of birational automorphisms of X, actually the, group of whole, the whole group of automorphisms of X. And for rational variety, of course, it's very big. Uh, the same kind of rigidity uh, strategy uh, has been applied recently also by Tomasi Dufernex, who showed the following thing. So Dufernex, Xn in Pn, never rational, over C. So any, I guess that before uh, there were also results on general or something like this, but uh, now it's really for any. His name. <laughs> Buklikov. I mean, he proved it for general. Okay, okay. Well, I didn't know about this. Thank you. Uh, so then for unirationality. As I said just in the very beginning, some of them are unirational. What? Well, some of them are unirational. Here is one more equation. So it's this one. Let me write it down. Quartic, as we can see. So this is an example of a quartic, which is smooth and which is unirational. Huh? Is it trivial? Well, uh, well, not. But it's uh, if you're lucky to be able to read the paper of. Uh, Iskowski Hanmanin, which is in Russian, maybe there is some translation. Then he, they explain, but if you uh, uh, cannot, then you can try by yourself because it's kind of a geometrical argument. You can find just a good surface which is inside, so and then produce some vibration which actually really produces you a map, and uh, like from rational variety to here. And so, well, such explicit uh, examples. Um, 
well, they exist, but it's not known for all quartics what happens. So, uh, so now we were interested uh, in st the stable rationality of these varieties. So, So following uh, the work uh, that uh, Claire Vazan did uh, on quartic double solids with color talent, we uh, tried to, to work with these examples. And so here is uh, what he showed. So first, oh, I have to use uh, to, to, to introduce some notation. Uh, so uh, to parameterize all quartics, I will do the following thing. I will just introduce some projective space, uh, Pn, the space of coefficients, what I'll write maybe P, this is the n which you can determine, uh, this something like tonight. So the space of coefficients for quartics. And then I can just uh, uh, consider the very trivial, I mean, the, the, just the universal family, meaning that I just plug in the coefficients I take here and I get a quartic. So everything is over C. Okay? Uh, so the first thing tells you that for B and T, very general. The quartic is not stably rational. And even it is not retract rational. Maybe I will put it this way. So very general means that uh, we remove a countable union of uh, closed proper subarrays. Okay. And uh, then for the set of points, the set of points B, such that XB is not uh, retract rational is a risky dance. And I will even uh, explain you like more precise construction. And also uh, there are examples over Cuba. So this was suggested that to us by Olivier Wittenberg. So let me explain your, uh, the methods to prove this. So, okay, maybe I can. Is it okay uh, if I um, erase this, or are you still interested in this example? Oh, okay. Well, I guess that the, somehow the method should be uh, already clear from the previous talks, but let me just summarize uh, what is going on so, here. Sorry, but, but why, why is 2 not automatic from 1 Well, I just put it like this because I wanted to explain something more precise, but it kind of takes some time. So, yeah, sorry. Method. Do you mean the set where it is retract rational is risky or something? I mean, I'm not quite. No, no, sorry. What? It's not retract rational? It, it does seem that you close from 1, so I'm confused. But, but maybe we'll see. So, what three says that are examples of what? Over Q bar of uh, non retract rational uh, quartics. Because here it's over C. Okay? So, yeah. A priori. Yeah. So, it's a risk dance. Ah, dance. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, method. Let me just summarize it in, two step, in three steps and then uh, explain these three steps. So, first, what was uh, also the um, um, going on? Uh, for double, for quartic double solids, and that you have to find some special variety, special bad variety, which has non-trivial invariance. Then you can find not special, but uh, you maybe may be interested in the specialization argument to know how your environments behave in family. Okay, so specialization. 
of invariance. Well, and then that's what I was worried with uh, the examples with quartics. You can, you may be interested in some interesting families, right? Then, uh, so interesting, interesting families. Well, okay. Uh, so, well, the first one we almost did. So, okay. <laughs> Here is an example, but it is not a quartic, right? So what should we do to produce a quartic from this? So all these terms, they do have degree, so equals to zero. They, have, they do have degree four. Only this one matters. What's the exponent on Z3? D3, nothing, but this one is of degree three. No, the term is four. Square. Is that it's a two quartic. Sorry. Well, I forgot. Maybe somebody can help me. <laughs> <laughs> well, what would be uh, like the easiest guess? How to produce it? How to deal with this square? Yeah, square. What square? Something. The four square something. Okay, and square something. The, the most easiest something is actually the zero square. Okay, so one of where all these one it doesn't matter. So let me put it like this. So now we have a quartic. Well, it's, it, it sounds <laughs> this sounds kind of naive, but actually it has an advantage that if you put z zero equals to one, then nothing changes from the b from I mean uh, the, these two varieties, this one and the previous one has two isomorphic subsets, and actually this one is birational to R T Mumford. Okay, so let me call this variety y. This is y. So y is birational to R T Malford. So if I manage to produce a resolution of singularities, which I will still call z, so z uh, uh, resolution of singularities, because this one is singular of singularities. So then uh, here z is birational to R T Malford smooth, and because the invariants like Brouwer group, they are, well, the uh, birational invariants for smooth variety, then you have here for free. You just have, you have nothing to do. You just have, I mean, but the resolution of singularities, which, which could be tricky, but still, this one is not zero. Okay? So here is a step one, one here, okay? Well, we will have to say more about this map, but we will go come back later in this. Well, the interesting families now we also know these are our family X. Just because, well, the quartics, they look easy, so, well, the upper surfaces, well. Uh, and then uh, we have to understand what should we do, and actually we will discuss better invariance rather than Brouwer group, which behaves better under specialization. So here is the, uh, uh, so the, uh, the invariance. So maybe you've already heard about this several times, but just let me recall this again. So, the invariants are CH0 triviality. So here is two definitions. I'll take X a variety over K, some field K, which is proper. To such variety, I can associate the child group of zero cycles. And because it is proper, I have a degree map here. To Z degree map. Well, let uh, me call this variety CH0 trivial. And actually, I just don't want to write it on the blackboard. But um, it's actually CH0 universally trivial. If this degree map is an isomorphism, universally, meaning for any field containing little k. Really, by any field, I really mean any field, not really uh, like an algebraic extension or like whatever you want to take. So this is one. And two, if you have a proper map of algebraic varieties over k, uh, proper, 
is uh, CH0 trivial if, well, for proper map, you can also define the uh, push forward on child groups of zero cycles. And you also want it to be isomorphism, an isomorphism for any L containing K. Well, this last um, property is actually uh, kind of not that easy to, to, to uh, test, but there is a way to test, and it is the following one. Oh. What? No, just uh, proper. I mean, I guess that uh, if it is not, then maybe you can see that it's not. Oh. Uh, well, and uh, yeah, enough here. Uh, that uh, for any M and Y, but indeed in the cases we will be interested in, that will be always subjective. But uh, well, for any M and Y, um, yeah, uh, the fiber, the fiber X M is CH zero trio. Well, I guess you don't want to have non-proper maps from this, but well, let me just keep it like this. It's a definition, anyway. Okay, so now I can ask you, what are examples of CH0 uh, trivial varieties? <laughs> well, what are uh, like... PN. PN, yeah, exactly. PN is great. But maybe uh, going, so we, okay, let, let's go to the very first logic, PN, okay? Then after PN, there are rational varieties, right? Rational also works. Then there are stably rational and even retract rational. So all these varieties are uh, CH0 trivial. Excuse me, so when you say enough for all M in, what kind of points do you? Uh, any point, like a skin point. Is it, uh, all the points. Uh, well, actually. The variety over the, the function here. Yeah, 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 sure. Yeah, the variety over there. I have to write like a couple of them. Yeah. And what actually, what happens here, it, uh, well, what do you want to see? Yeah, uh, the, um, uh, you will be actually interested in closed points and the, um, 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 the generic points of curves, if you want to prove uh, this, okay? But, uh, but in particular, you have to look to generic points of curves inside. Uh, well, uh, now let me um, uh, explain some consequences. So X is CH0 trivial. So implies so let me see oh, x over c here, just to simplify. And the uh, equivalent here, if x is smooth, that uh, x has an uh, integral decomposition of diagonal. So meaning that x has an integral decomposition of diagonal. meaning that the diagonal of x can be written as x cross point plus some other cycle which is supported. So this happens in Chow groups of x cross x of dimension x with the support of the z uh, is uh, in d cross x and d is of co-dimension 1 at least. So of co-dimension at least 1. And so this is, uh, well, uh, one. And um, then what is uh, nice with this is by action of correspondences, uh, one can show also that uh, if x is CH0 trivial, this also implies that all the invariants we were considering are actually zero. So you have no torsion in the bra group. And actually, I put it, let me put it this way. HI unramified of x, we say torsion coefficients are always zero. So for any i. Well, at least, well, 
for an AI. In particular, there is no brow growth. So in particular, okay, uh, this Z here, Z is not CH0 trivial. Okay. I guess it's clear from the, from the consequence there. Okay. Okay, let me show you how to use this. So to use this, we are still here in the step two. So we, uh, we want to have some specialization properties. So let me uh, tell you one or two, hope two. Well, the second one, well, uh, it's due to Claire Voisin. Uh, with um, like with uh, the decomposition of diagonal. So if you have a family of varieties over C, which is said flat, say flat and proper, and maybe we can assume that there is a section, but it doesn't matter. Then you look for the locus of B in uh, B of C, such that XB has uh, Chow decomposition, well, how, how is it I wrote it? Integral decomposition of diagonal, sorry. So this locus on the base, it's actually a countable union of closed proper subvarieties. So countable with BE in B, uh, closed. But the point that here actually nobody tells you if sum of bi equals to b or not. So that actually is the point. Okay. And so the second proposition, which is another specialization property. So, okay, let me put it here. Oh no, uh, I can put it just here. which is not difficult to prove, but still, as the following. So it's a local uh, specialization argument. So we assume that we are in local situations. So let me take a Hanselian discrete validation ring. And for simplicity, I assume that k equals to k bar, is a residue field, algebraically closed. But it's not actually necessary. And so let me, let me assume that we have this um, um, well, I will write it also. Um, well, how should I write it? Okay, x over spec A. And here I have a special fiber Y, which is over spec K. And uh, the generic fiber over the function field here. So we use our local situation. Now let me make some assumptions. So assume that uh, y, well, it can be singular, but it is irreducible, and it has a resolution of singularity d. We can even assume that here it is an isomorphism of a smooth locus. So let me call this pi, and z smooth. Smooth, proper, actually the family is proper, and flat. So this is smooth, proper. Uh, and uh, let me consider here also assume that um, uh, for x we also have a resolution of singularity x tilde over k, which is uh, also smooth. Proper. So uh, here is the conclusion. So if, so assume pi is CH0 trivial. So here is important condition on the resolution of singularities, which can be checked by uh, just uh, on fibers, and which actually holds here. So here, this map is CH0 trivial. So one has to check, because it follows from 
from the construction of the resolution of singularities, but it's important that in this example it's <coughs> way, sorry. So, and then with these assumptions, the CH0 triviality specializes well here. So let me put it this way. If x tilde over an algebraic closure k bar is CH0 trivial, then z is CH0 trivial. So this is uh, a specialization argument for this property. And actually, it could be much more flexible than uh, the way I announced uh, it here. In particular, you don't need to assume this field algebraically closed. Also here, you can relax a little bit the assumptions. But let me just for this talk put it this way. Well, OK. And uh, now let me show you how to get this theorem now, OK? Uh, OK. Should I turn my back? Well, I can erase maybe this. So, proof. See, oh, okay. Uh, so, we have here a quartic which has a resolution uh, with, which is C0 trivial map, but the resolution is itself is not C0 trivial because of this brow, right? And so this quartic will give me some point to this space of coefficients, okay? So we have our x to b, to p, a family of quartics, and then let me call, well, C here, a point corresponding to uh, y. Okay, uh, then, well, um, with some, some more argument, one can prove here that, well, of course, it's a resolution here, which is, n which is not H0 trivial, but actually, um, so fact y itself has no integral decomposition of diagonal. It's, well, it's, mm, one has to do something, but, um, well, that's true. And then we apply the, uh, sorry, I will go back, uh, the proposition by Claire, saying that actually in, for this family, we found a point where there is no decomposition, meaning that this uh, countable union is not all. So if I take a very general point which is outside of this union, then there is no uh, decomposition. So sorry for this. So uh, Y is the... Uh, is a single variety, yes. Okay, and Z, Z was... Is a resolution which is zero trivial. That you construct by... By blowing up twice and uh, by hand, yeah, it takes some mm -hmm. number of pages, but it's not... Yeah. Uh, wait, oh, well, okay, so proposition one implies that for a general point, for a very general point, for a very general B and P, uh, XB is, uh, has no decomposition, so is not retract rational. And so for two, we will apply this. So for two here. So this is what I actually wanted to say. So let me draw a picture. So I have here the space of coefficients, which is P. Here I have my bad point, which is this bad point has a property that it is defined over Q bar, right? So define it over Q bar. Then if I take any line, L, which is defined over Q bar, because of this property, 
I will have the following consequence. So if I have here a generic point eta of the line, then x eta will say if smooth, and even maybe over an algebraic closure if smooth is not stable, is not CH0 trivial. So is not uh, retract rational. Uh, so here I said L is defined also over Q bar. This is by proposition by proposition two because uh, so here we have generic fiber and here we'll have special fiber with the resolution which is not at CH2 trivial. Okay. And uh, well let me just tell more that actually this implies that for any point, so that's what I meant by the risky dance, so something more precise, that for any point B in L, which is not, uh, which is just has one transcendental parameter, so uh, not in Q bar, uh, this will also imply that X B bar is not stable or retract rational. And the final comment will be about the finite field. So how to produce something over Q bar. So let me tell you this. Um, so over, so to produce x for uh, over q bar, not retract rational, or xb, choose b, which somehow specializes, specializes to some little u, uh, which was uh, an open, uh, such that the art in for the example, uh, you can you can um, extend it over some open or over some uh, window of integers in the number field, and then then you have also uh, non-trivial invariance. Okay, U with the extension of um, Artin Alfred uh, with as I wrote it before, like H three et al. So the condition was like this: Z U bar. Z2, 2 is non zero. So actually, just by this argument, you can show that it's non zero. OK, so uh, as usual, I, I thought I will have very few things to say. And finally, I'm a little bit over time. So sorry for this. And thank you for your attention. <laughs> Any questions? What kind of similarities does uh, Y have? Well, actually, that's a, uh, there are usual double point singularities. You just blow up once, and then you have a whole quadric, and that's good. <coughs> or you also have a line which is singular. You have to blow up the whole line. Then once you did this, you still have some singularities. You still have one blow up uh, once. Mm. Yeah. So well, they are somehow, uh, well, it will be very interesting to know uh, which kind of singularities will give the precise uh, um, not bound, but they, they are precisely suitable for these kind of arguments. Because, of course, if you have a cone or elliptic curve, as I uh, explained yesterday, that's, that's uh, bad. Done. Is there any other example besides the Manfold? Where you get to the Manfold invariant? Yeah, there are also conic bundles, actually. Yeah. Um, there are lots of conic bundles. Uh, in their uh, in their um, um, paper, they do this, and also I guess Bert will also explain some kind of related examples to this. And I'll explain. I mean, I'll report on Mobile's paper. I'll explain another example. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. More questions? Okay. So we can speak again.